Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson, and I'm the CEO of Miami's Action Coach Business Coaching Firm, Team Sage, and the host of Business Spotlight South Florida, where we focus on the businesses that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Jared Black of New Vine Employment Group. Welcome, Jared. Please give us a brief description of your business and what makes it unique in the talent acquisition space. Thank you, Jody. Um, New Vine Employment Group is a boutique staffing and recruiting firm. Uh, we're positioned here in Miami, and uh, we help businesses uh, seek out, screen, recruit, and retain the best talent in the market. Uh, and what makes us different is our ability to take the client's needs and culture uh, and really carry that torch forward for them and act as a a liaison for them in the marketplace to different candidates and uh, employees and reach further than they're able to do so internally, whether it's just lack of resources, lack of time, lack of knowledge. Uh, and we were able to leverage our abilities to be able to bring them the best talent. Good. It's a pretty uh, competitive space um, that, that's in, you know, recruiting and, and retention space. What had you start this business? And how long have you been in business? Uh, we started in 2015. Uh, We've been in this for a while. Yeah, yeah, we've been out for a little while. And I think what separates us is that we are not interested in doing business with everyone. We want to partner and we call them partners. We don't really call them clients or customers or anything. We think, them, we think of them as partners because we want to provide such a high level of customer service that it feels that we're a part of your company. We're an extension of your human resources. We're extension of your operations. We're extension of your management. So being very selective of our client and our partner is very, very important. We want to make sure that they're the right partner for us and we're the right partner for them before we get started. That's the first thing. Second thing is that customer service that I mentioned. We offer a white glove type of service to an industry that typically doesn't get that type of service. It's it, We focus on helping light industrial businesses, hospitality businesses. So those environments are typically dirty, grungy environments or hardworking environments where they're not really the white collar type of environment. So we bring an aspect of luxury and customer service and that white glove feel uh, to an industry that typically doesn't get that. Um, and then in addition to that is just our knowledge in the space. So I think that separates us a lot of people try to get into the staffing space, just try to connect people really fast, but not really thinking about the long-term ramifications or benefits to either party, whether it be the candidate or the client. And if you create a bad candidate experience or a bad client experience, you're not going to get repeat business. You're not going to get repeat hires. You're not going to get referrals. And you're not going to be able to really grow your, your, your brand or your company in the space. It'll, it'll just be a really short window, a really quick turnaround for that individual transaction. So uh, the, all of those things could, together, I think, separates us or gives us our competitive advantage in the market. Well, it's interesting that you're focusing on on you know one of the areas that's our greatest you know tourism, the <clears throat> hospitality, flower industry, like produce, all yeah. of that, right? Yeah. Um, because we're kind of known here in South Florida for these things, and yet there's a dearth of of available talent. And so exactly. Let me ask you this the the experience that you're providing is white glove on both sides with the people that you're interviewing to place as well as the. As Absolutely. A hundred percent. You would not believe how many candidates come to us and experience such poor treatment, whether it be through a job application process or through another staffing agency. Um, they're treated very badly, especially the immigrant workers, which, you know, South Florida, this is a very high population of immigrant workers where they're used to coming from a place or uh, not really having much more than just their job function. And that's it. They go to job, they go to their job, perform their duty, and then they leave. So coming here to the United States and having all these different aspects to the job market is very foreign to them. It's very different. And a lot of the times they get taken advantage of. So people come to us and they've experienced being charged for a job, which is crazy to me. Um, they are, uh, being promised things like, uh, no taxes taking out of their check or extra money or higher wages or, or a job that never gets delivered. They're being promised, uh, opportunities that never really 
formalize into anything or materialize into anything. So it's really bad treatment. And then also they just kind of get like bullied a little bit um, because in that situation, the employment agency or the employer holds all the power. So the employee gets pretty, uh, pretty poorly treated. So we provide such a comfortable, safe space for them to feel, you know, appreciative and, and happy to work with us. We don't really lose a lot of our candidates over time. And we also have a, a, a referral basis because our candidates are so happy to refer their friends and family and neighbors to say, hey, I had a really good experience working with New Event Employment Group. Uh, I think you should reach out to them as well. And then the client side, the partner side, we want to do the same thing because typically our partners are cargo agencies, airlines, trucking companies, shippers, importers, distributors, uh, exporters of many different products. We specialize in the perishables items. Oh, yeah. So yes, yeah, that's actually my background is perishables. Mm -hmm. uh, so flowers, fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, poultry, uh, anything with an expiration date or any sensitive material, we specialize. We really understand how that product <laughs> and, and category moves. That's a real niche. Yeah. So we're able to really dive in and really help those those companies uh, find the right talent for them because it's not really so straightforward to find somebody that's comfortable working in Miami in a 30 degree temperature cooler and be able to perform at a high level day after day for 10 hours a day. Uh, so that's why we really separate ourselves. But, you know, those people or those the, the people, the managers of those facilities, the managers of those businesses are typically wearing multiple hats. They're maybe an operations person or an HR person or a, even an owner of a company. They're doing the hiring. They're doing the firing. They're doing the payroll. They're doing the hours. They're doing the timekeeping. They're doing the oversight. They're doing inventory. They're doing safety inspections. They're doing quality control. They're wearing all these different hats at the same time. So what we're able to do is take a lot, a lot of that off their work plate and just say, hey, let us worry about this. And you focus on the core aspects of your business. And together, we'll provide the best outcome possible because they're going to be focused on their business, whether it's sales, whether it's safety, whether it's quality control. Uh, whether it's customer relations, whatever it is, and we're bringing the best talent for them based on their needs, and then managing that talent, giving that talent an opportunity to grow and develop into different areas of their business. That was that's what really drives us and keeps us um, working with clients long term. Jared, I'm fascinated by the um, the depth of thinking that you put into your business model and into your niche, right? So. What is your background in perishables and what had you start this business? My my family is actually um, from the flower industry. So oh. uh, I actually got started working in Miami in the import flower industry. I was fourth generation. Oh my so God. So my great grandfather uh, was uh, in the flower industry. He had, a, he had a wholesaler in New York City on 28th Street in Manhattan. And my grandfather did as well. And uh, my father was in the, in the business as well. And then we relocated to Miami. Um, in the wholesale flower space. And I joined my father's company uh, way back when. And my dad is a very, you know, you got to earn your stripes kind of mentality. So it doesn't matter, you know, fourth generation or, or not, you're pushing a broom, you're throwing boxes, you're working your way up just like anybody else would. And that's kind of how I learned to not only work along this, the type of people that work with us today, but also what it takes to be successful in that environment, because it is a hard environment. It is hard work. Um, the industry is very fast paced with perishables. Uh, every, every day is a day off of the life of that item. So you can't have days where people just don't show up to work, where your product doesn't move, or there's delays of any kind. Every day matters. So there's a, a sort of, you know, pace that you have to work within. And a lot of companies don't really communicate that pace to their employees or new employees. So that's where we come in and we're able to really build out a uh, strong pipeline of people who are able to work in those conditions. And we help kind of rotate between industry type to industry type. So my background is perishables and flowers and any type of perishable is very similar related there. You know, it's cold chain management. It's fast paced. Uh, it's hard conditions. It's typically physical labor. Um, and also there's like a level of communication amongst different areas and departments that needs to happen at a very fast pace. So you have sales and you have fulfillment and you have warehousing and you have <laughs> import, you have distrib distribution, you have your trucking, you have your airlines. It's a lot of moving parts. So 
You know, it, um, I have two clients, one that uh, they import pineapple. Okay. The other is um, uh, customs brokers. And so okay. I'm very familiar with this perishable yoink world uh, because the customs brokers is focused on perishables as well. And the the what I'm hearing in what you've just described is your capacity as the uh, founder of this company to coordinate what seems uncoordinated mm-hmm. in the industry to provide a service that is you know sorely needed. Yeah. Yeah. So well yeah. done. Well done. You, you got an award uh, for the best staffing agency in Miami. Okay, so yeah. you're really doing many things right. Yeah. So I uh, that's a um, I'm proud of that one just because we didn't really apply for it. We were nominated for it randomly and um, uh, anonymously. So it's I think they have people who just kind of look at different sectors and uh, whether it's staffing or recruiting or different you know industries or, or businesses that help. And we were nominated and uh, we didn't seek that award. We didn't apply for it. You know, there's a lot of companies who are like, oh, I want to be on the Inc. 5,000 yeah. best or I want to be, you know, on this one, a lot, especially in staffing and recruiting. There are companies that make their money. Their business model is to go out and seek businesses that want to be listed on these or references on these awards. And I never believed in that. It's like, if, if you do good, you'll get recognized for it. So, uh, yeah, we were we were awarded the best uh, staffing company in 2023. Uh, the t- I think we we're in the top. Uh, like one or two, I think, something like that. Very cool. Very, yeah. very cool. You know, Simon Sinek says people don't care what you do or how you do what you do. They care why you do what you do. So mm-hmm. why do you do what you do, Jared? I think it's something that's just to my roots. Um, I like helping people. And there's a very, very good feeling when, you know, I like I said, I grew up in that space, working kind of shoulder to shoulder with a lot of immigrant workers uh, my whole childhood. And they're very, very good people. And uh, though I'm born and raised, you know, I was born in New York, mostly raised here in South Florida. Um, but, you know, from the United States, I feel like we're very fortunate. We have a lot of opportunity and people are looking for those opportunities. And I like being able to help people find those opportunities and grow and develop and become better versions of themselves. So I really do enjoy that. And my team enjoys it. And it's part of our core values. Cool. So how many people are on your team? Uh, We have about 10 um, in-house managers, recruiters, sales, Mm -hmm. marketing, kind of all together helping move the machine. That's good. Very good. All right. So given the business model, were there any opportunities and challenges during the pandemic? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of challenges. Okay. A lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges. So everyone had the same challenge that they couldn't get people to come to work. And we had the same challenge. And that presented the most obvious opportunity to get in front of businesses that were having a hard time finding the talent to come to work. So it was like a catch-22. We had all the business opportunity in the world, but no supply. And so it's like, there, it, was, it was incredibly frustrating and challenging, but we, like, we stay true to what we are and what we do. To give you an example, uh, there was tremendous opportunity to move into healthcare. I am not a healthcare staffing company by nature, but at that time, hospitals, doctors, clinics, government, nobody cared what you did before. If you can provide service to me now, we'll talk to you. And there was tremendous pressure and opportunity to jump into healthcare and provide staffing or recruiting support to the healthcare industry. And I know a lot of companies that did, a lot of companies wound up finding success and a lot of companies wound up failing. Uh, I felt that it was best to stay true to my core values and what I know. Uh, I don't like to be a jack of all trades. I like to be a master. And uh, we consider ourselves masters in these two niches, which is, like I said, light industrial and hospitality. Very good. Very good. That did also submarine our hospitality business though. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hospitality took a real big hit for a while so yeah yeah, yeah. i have a hospitality group um so certainly happy to make an introduction to them oh, great you. we'd love to help great. so what do you say is the biggest challenge today what are you facing in the next two to three years as you look at growth i think the biggest challenge today is not such an obvious challenge I think everyone is very much attracted to the headlines. Uh, You know, it's very easy to get scared and and afraid of today's market. 
and what is being pushed in front of us as far as recession coming, maybe not recession coming, you know, kind of this banking and all the red flags and all the all the headlines are, are very intimidating and scary. I think what is happening beneath the surface, and this is what I'm seeing, is South Florida is becoming a huge destination. I think that's somewhat known to the, to the, to most people. But what it's doing is you have all these people coming into Florida. Florida's getting over a thousand people per day moving to the state. Over a thousand per day moving to the state from all over the country, which is great for Florida. But what that's doing, it's bringing other professionals from other states who are usually earning higher or are used to making the living of or the cost of living that. South Florida, we are seeing is a little bit high, but to them, it's a it's a almost like a flat or a decrease from where they're coming from. Let's say New York or California or things states like that, New Jersey. So the cost of living in South Florida is a decrease from where they were living. But what it's doing is it's raising the cost of living for South Floridians. Most importantly, those who are doing the work for us today. So those fourteen, fifteen dollar an hour factory worker, import worker, cargo worker, warehouse worker, forklift operator, or cleaning person, housekeeper, uh, bus boy, server—all those people who make fifteen dollars or less are being forced out of the market. They're seeking residence or seeking new job opportunities in other markets outside of Miami because they're just being priced out of the market. They can no longer make a living in South Florida. In in anything, in Boca South, you can't make a living on 15 bucks an hour. So, and that's really still a commanding pay rate for a lot of these level, even less for a lot of these level of employees, these low skilled trade workers. Um, so they're going to Orlando, Tampa, Jacksonville, North Florida, because you could still make a living there. Cost of a home, cost of an apartment, things like that. Uh, Miami is pricing itself out of the skill worker uh, opportunity. Which I don't know what that whole industry. It's gonna be, it's, yeah, it's going to be terrible market. because South Florida is a huge hospitality hub. We have Miami International Airport, which is one of the biggest airline for cargo in the yep. eastern seaboard. We have the Port of Miami, which is one yep. of, now one of the busiest ports in all the United States. You have all of these things that are very vital to South Florida to be able to move in a logistics capacity and you don't have the staff to support it. And what that's been doing is kind of forcing people to one, increase their price of their product or service, or two, it's forcing companies to hire undocumented workers. And that's the real risk that I see today. Um, and probably for the next 18 months, at least, I don't know past that, but that's what I've been, that's the trend I've been seeing. Yeah. That's uh big business challenge for you and for our community as well. Absolutely. What's inspiring you the most about business right now? Technology. I think technology is fascinating. Um, I think being, uh, I don't want to say like first, but just ahead of the curve is very important in business. You have to be able to recognize that things don't always stay the same and being able to change and being comfortable to change is important. And uh, that's that's what excites me. It excites it excites me to discover what's next, to think about what's where is the industry going, and um, how I can be a part of that. <laughs> All right. So, as we wrap up the interview, are there any kind of parting thoughts that you want to share? Uh, yeah, I think that it's important to to consider all these different aspects. Uh, business owners tend to kind of get a little bit shaken up by a lot of the headlines and a lot of what everyone repeats, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. I would say just kind of stay stay true to your core values, stay true to what you do, you know, and and keep your head down and keep moving forward. And, you know, things tend to, to, to work out for the best, yeah. Well, thank you, Jared. It's been a real pleasure listening to you and the way that you think and your strategic uh, mind and coordination is just like, it's uh, it's refreshing. Thank you. <laughs> You're a young person like you that's done the kind, the level of thinking and caring that you, that you are. So thank you so much for your time and the difference that you're making, you know, in your community and with your, your partners and also with your, your applicants, your candidates. And uh, you can find out more 
about New Vine Employment Group at newvinegroup.com. Mm-hmm. That's and correct. Jared, thank you so much for being with us today on Business Spotlight South Florida, where we focus on the business owners that make AMI great.